the newer version is called the 1088, the older version is the H83. Uh -huh. uh, basically what it does, I'll give you your, your temperature dew point. Temperature dew point? Uh, yep. And um, what we've done is we've modified the system in the years recent. We've actually, in this system now, we only use the, the actual ambient temperature because the new system, which is this one, uses primarily a dew point sensor. This is called a DTS-1 and basically it's designed only for this dew point. This has the capability of actually doing dew point also, but right now we're just using it as, as a backup. Right. Okay, basically the way it works is that this aspirator unit, this mushroom type device here, there's a fan basically that's put in here, it actually draws the air through the system. There are three probes, LED probes in there, and what they're designed to do is, uh, they use a chill mirror to keep like a 64th of an inch film on the mirror to de determine the actual dew point. On the bottom in here, there's an ambient. Like, you can come and take a look at it. There's a yeah. little white probe. You can see it actually, it's actually probably a little dirty now, but there's actually a probe in here. Right. That actually, check, that actually checks the extra ambient uh, air temperature. Oh, wow. Uh, this, this is actually what's used for the New York City area. When you hear like, touch New York City, such a box, it's coming. Like, Straight from this wow. reading right here. Right here. Okay. This basically is a, not an ASOS unit, it's a backup just to basically uh, keep check on the this sensor itself. Right. It's called an MMTS maximum temperature for the pulse. Je this is just temperature alone? Yeah. Just temperature alone. What uh -huh. do you see there? Yeah, right it's here. just verification. Mm -hmm. On that, that's for the co-op network, this is the the way, you know, for your co cooperative network, that's the MMTS. We usually give this with a standard rain gauge to all our co-op observers. Okay. All right. Um, the, and maybe I can't open this one. I can actually open so you can see what the electronics looks like on, on the inside of the DTS-1 sensor. More or less. Uh, I'm open. I'm supposed to open it with a <laughs> preset. This is what it more or less looks like. All the systems, basically internally, they use fiber optic cabling, more or less, to the main sensor group. Um, fiber, more or less, as you know, has faster data so forth. So when they modernized the system, uh, like like 10 years ago, we decided to go all fiber internally to all system fiber. Uh, this site itself is a non-standard site. It's very unique because the ASOS system was primarily designed for airport. It's actually designed for the aviation community. And this site was actually modified because of the, uh, the, the amount of years that's actually over 125 years of uh, what it was collected for the site specifically. So there's a lot of different things here that uh, are not really uh, What exactly was modified? Like, um, well, the actual, the, once they modified, Brian has some handouts, he'll give it to you. The actual ASOS layout is actually on a monorail. This is actually, this whole set will actually be on a rail. Okay. Straight out. So you actually have uh, the, the uh, tipping bucket first, you have the, the temperature sensor, the quick uh, water sensor, it'll be all in an array. It's a standard throughout the entire country. There's about over a thousand of these sites put together throughout the United States. And that's standard. Um, this, this is a very, a very unique site here. Right. Um, as far as what's not standard, I think this is another backup which I'll get to next. Okay, do you have any questions on the first sensor? <clears throat> oh, what I'll do, I'll go through all the sensors. Yeah, and then, and then questions we'll have questions on it. Okay, next sensor. Here. This is called a freezing rain sensor. Um, or ice detector, to say. Its purpose is to detect freezing rain. Uh, the way it basically works is pretty simple. Uh, there's a probe uh, on top of here uh, when it gets below 30, uh, 32 degrees. Um, ice forms on the top. It basically is an oscillator. It vibrates inside this probe about 40,000 times per second. Uh, as the ice forms on top of it, the uh, oscillation slows down, and then that, through the algorithms, will determine the process of how thick the ice is. Uh, <laughs> pretty simple. Yeah. Uh, and it actually gets very hot, so you don't want to put that You actually use your fingertips. Wow. Okay. It gets very hot. Do many of the stations still do it by human being? Yes, uh, they do. Uh, what they do is the three major airports that we have in the area Kennedy, LaGuardia, Newark, uh, they have observers on site 347. Uh, the smaller uh, Class B sites like uh, Winchester County Airport, Cheetah uh, Bar, Iceland, uh, I'll take some coffee up on the lab. Uh -huh. They have uh, observers on site 24-7, mm -hmm. more or less. The small airports, like for example, um, let's say, uh, Caldwell Airport, which is by FAA, at 11 o'clock, it's 
control is basically shut down the tower and it's not supposed to work automatically. Oh, but during, during the day they have a healing? During the day the air traffic control is uh, in contract is a little augmented weather. Okay. That, that's mandatory. But the major airports throughout the country, uh, it's standard that you must have uh, uh, observer on site. The only reason for that is because oh, of aviation, though, obviously, aviation right? Uh, they can actually, uh, more or less, at night time, a small tower, they'll switch on the... Uh, right. Uh, Okay, um, next up to be have, we'll skip this one. Um, uh, this one follows Bishop Goat, you can't do both breaking. It's all different between this one and that one because it's all standard with D. Okay, as you can see right now, it's like the strobe in the light. Let's call like a Xeon beam, like a strobe. And what it's doing is basically measuring the uh, particles in the, in, in the air as a fixed distance. It can determine a uh, range of 10 miles from half a mile to 10 mile visibility. Again, like I said, it's designed more for the aviation community. Um, very unique uh, system. The firmware for the system gets upgraded every few years. Itself, and it's pretty simple as far as constant how it works. It shoots out a fixed beam from the transmitter side, goes to the receiver side. Particles basically are determined to the algorithms to the microprocessor in here, and it'll give you a range of half mile to 10 mile range. Uh, the larger airports like Kennedy, LaGuardia, Newark will have three of these sensors. Small airports will only have one. The larger airports are, are considered uh, class one systems, like a DCP class one system. So small airports are class two. We mean they won't have a, a redundancy or, or a backup to it. Okay. Um, next system we have here this is called a CHI, abbreviated CHI, a cloud height indicator. Um, its purpose is to determine the cloud height uh, once again uh, for the uh, aviation community from um, 50 feet to 12,000 feet. Um, simple way of work uses an optic pipe laser beam on the transmitter side being this side here. Cut out window shoots out a beam, which goes to 12,000 feet, hits the hard target being the cloud, particles are then refracted from the cloud, goes to the receiver side, and the information then goes to the microprocessor through the algorithm every 10 minutes, fills up a data, data database, and determines the cloud height, whether it be 50 feet to uh, 12,000. What kind of beam does that send up there? It's an optic type laser beam. Laser. Dangerous. It's, it's only dangerous really if you have like a, a like a, a, glasses and look down into it, you really not supposed to look down to it at all. Uh, what you're hearing right now is actually a, a blower system. It's designed so if there's any type of precip that's on the, on, the, on the lens, it'll actually blow the precip away. There's also a built-in heater on both sides, so the one time if there's ice snow in there, it'll actually heat up enough the ice blow kicks on after under 40 degrees, it blows everything away. So also if it snows heavily, yes. it, it blows it away. It blows that away. You're hearing right now, this piece of protect the piece of this piece of the lens on the mm -hmm. glass and more or less uh, that's what it does. So these, like, these are rather expensive instruments. Uh, here. yeah, I think this is I think this might be like over fifteen or twenty thousand dollars. Just imagine what this holds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like the at the logic airports we will have a backup a backup for sensor. Okay. Uh, next sensor. This one's called a precision weather sensor. Uh, it works at the same principle as the visibility. Uh, you have a transmitter and receiver. Uh, we have heaters in the in, in the hoods. Basically, it's designed for cold weather conditions like snow, hail. It actually melt the piece to make sure we get the right amount of data. The fixed distance determined again it determines the amount of particles in the air and uh, within, a, uh, within a minute. And uh, can actually determine whether you have uh, rain, hail, sleet, snow, and I even read somewhere you can't even pick up volcanic ash. Text haze, fog, and so forth. Wow. Okay, and uh, last but not least, I'll just come on to the clip of the piece that's coming down this way to open this up in bad weather. Uh, this is uh, what we call the all fog system, all weather precipitation uh, gauge, uh, otherwise known as, as a tipping bucket. 
It's a weighing ring gauge. The pencil is basically is based on the weight, based on the amount of pizza that's in the that's in the bucket and pressure. To determine the amount of pizza that you have. Um, we have a we just upgraded this one last last year. We had a what's called a tipping bucket with a wind spreader, but it wasn't as precise. So we had a lot of false tips uh, on it. This one is a more accurate uh, system, more or less. And uh, it's, these are like levers to stop uh, from wind yeah. affecting it. So? More or less. So. Is this the new standard ASOS? This is the new standard. Yeah. Uh, certain sites have this. Uh, the uh, weather service mm -hmm. has this at all of our uh, climate sites. The, and mm -hmm. once again, it's determined on the FE uh, locations at all the airports whether or not they want them in or not. But this is going to be the new standard, and they're very, very expensive. Would you say that was the tipping bucket type? Yeah, the tipping bucket concept at some of the other sites, though, the aviation sites that we have, works on the principle where we have like a funnel piece that goes in. And at the bottom, there's like a fulcrum of seesaw. Hmm. And what you have in the middle is a, is a, mag a magnet connected to a, a, a fiber optic cable. Wow. And through the magnet, connects, like the magnet generate electric pulse, you know, light energy, and that actually counts the pulses, which is recorded into a uh, precept. Pretty simple concept, but you know, uh, we decided to go this way. If they pick such sites where they actually want to put their, their uh, new range gauge on. It's very, very costly. It takes several hours to put this one in. Um, before it comes down anymore, I'll pop this open real quick. This here is the brain to the system. It's called an ACU. It's called an acquisition control unit. And this system collects all the data from each and every sensor through five optic cable in here. Uh, the data is then relayed back uh, to the office land system, we have that it's updated every one minute, and the observation to the site goes out every 10 to 10 minutes to the hour. Wow. Okay. Okay. And this is the ACU system. Basically, like I said, all information comes into the pipe out to condo it into the system here. All the fiber cable is in here. We have the main ACU system here, which is the uh, CPU process and the memory for this configuration to the site. We have uh, SIO cards, zero input Apple cards, talk to all the sensors. We have um, a voice card here. We, I'll show the voice shortly. You can actually hear the ASOS synthetic voice. We have uh, analog digital cards in the system, more or less. Here we have, this is another sensor, this is uh, the altimeter, which is used as the to avionics that yeah they need to put us pressure sensors things need to know how to land <laughs> so it's just very important this, this sensor is uh, inside because more or less if there's a loss of power out here to any of the sensors they, they go offline this is internal this can still work for at least an hour because we have a backup battery supply so if there's any power loss to the park uh, this system will still run until now at certain sites in the um, major airports some systems are connected to uh, generators, so they can run for several hours, more or less. Okay, here we have the modems. This is more or less how we talk to the system internally, uh, remotely back into our office, and also dialing out the observations. Uh, breaker switches we have for each individual sensor. Uh, we have backup power supplies, uh, part of the UPS system, and um, that basically is it. Any questions? Mm-hmm.